feel quite good about 2022. Um, we've had some very significant profits uh, from hedges, uh, you know, decent percentage of which we've realized. So that gives us cash to deploy. Uh, that's offset some weakness in, I would say, stock price uh, performance. Uh, we definitely, uh, you know, the, the, I think the last reported return uh, was probably something in the 13% range, something along those lines year to date. Uh, we're a bit ahead of the S&P. Um, but uh, what I, we really focus on is the performance of the companies we own. And in almost every case, uh, with one uh, short-term glaring example, which was Netflix, which we can, we, we can discuss, uh, we feel very, very good about the businesses we own. Um, you know, Universal Music uh, continues to you know, perform extraordinarily well and we expect it to for, for decades to come. Uh, you know, really, every company we own has reported uh, good results, actually quite strong results, management, you know, taking the right initiatives, we feel very good about the businesses. And what's happened is, you know, the move in rates has caused, you know, re-rating in multiples and, and brought down kind of today's stock market value of these companies. Um, but we like them on January 1 at the prices where they traded, and we like them more today at, at lower valuations. And we think, you know, sort of finally, the Federal Reserve is getting aggressive about uh, tempering inflation. And I think that's important for the long-term value of these businesses. So as long as we don't we're not in a world with runaway inflation forever. Um, you know, and even in that world, we own the kind of businesses for the most part that can protect themselves from inflation. So we like the companies we own. Uh, we like, uh, the, you know, the prices that were, where they trade. And then Pershing Square Holdings itself, the entity, the, the discount to NAV has widened over the course of the year. So the, you know, the performance of the share price is disappointing to us because it includes further widening, widening of, the, of the gap between NEV and, and share price. And uh, we, we did launch a pretty aggressive share repurchase program. We're buying the maximum every day that we can uh, in the open market. And the benefit uh, for the long-term investor, obviously, is canceling shares at a 35% discount to NEV is quite a, a creative use of capital, particularly when NEV is comprised of businesses you really like that are trading at themselves cheap prices. So you're, we're buying back stock today. And the last time we sort of did the math, we sort of estimated kind of our, if, the, if you took the kind of fair value of everything we own and they traded at fair value, uh, that's a number, you know, comfortably in excess of $70 per share. And we're buying back stock, you know, today at 32 or $33 a share. And I think that will inure to our benefit over the long term. Um, so, it, you know, obviously very interesting, challenging year for the world. Um, we try to own businesses that can withstand the test of time. And I think we've been successful in selecting them. You know, the, uh, it's sort of a U.S. Uh, headquartered company with most of its, you know, about half its profits in America uh, listed on Euronext Amsterdam. And it, it suffers a little bit, I would say, from what Pershing Square Holdings suffers from, uh, where the, the logical market for that stock is probably NASDAQ or, or the New York Stock Exchange. And, that, and that's something the company can address over time. But it's uh, the business is doing great. Earnings are up. We know well in excess of what we expected. We bought the, you know, made the deal to buy the stock in, in August of, uh, of last year, and uh, just the multiples come down. It's trading at you know something under twenty times earnings, for a business that we think can grow earnings at you know twenty percent, or certainly high teens compounded for a long, long time in a you know really undisruptible business. Uh, you know Ukraine is going through you know a tragedy and. Uh, you know, but my guess is people are still listening to music in Ukraine. You know, it it, it can appease, you know, the mind at, a, at at tragic times, and it's you know it's a kind of universal language, and uh, you're going to see more and more growth in music streaming over time, and I think it's pretty inevitable. So we like inevitable uh, companies, and we think we have by far the best management team in the industry. So there's nothing to complain about, other than I would say in the short term perhaps the share price. The other thing that is hurting the share price. Uh, is the, you know, uh, the translation of euro to dollars, right? This is uh, a euro uh, uh, list, you know, entity. Uh, we we hedge our exposure to kind of Universal's uh, operating income in terms of its uh, euro and uh, other currency uh, exposures. We don't hedge, if you will, sort of the, the translation risk of the of the, of the of the stock price. So I think you know the earnings are better than expected, you know, partially because um, 
you know, the, I, obviously the business is doing really, really quite well, but uh, over time, we expect the market to give benefit for the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of the company's earnings are in U.S. dollars and the U.S. dollar is appreciated. You know, the stock price doesn't yet reflect that. And we think it will over time. But again, great company, great management, very, very cheap stock. Shouldn't trade it 19 times earnings. It makes no sense.